Hey, all my nerd geeks and dorks, and welcome to Radcast, the podcast where your nerd card is accepted. And with me today, as always, are my friends and co-hosts. We have Adam. Hello. Hello, and I'm Dave. Hello, Dave. Oh, what it is, what it was, what it will be. What's shaking, dude? Man, it's just been a... It seems like it's been a long, long week. Dude, it's been a long, long week, month, whatever for me, dude. I, well, you know, you've, you've I've been, been working, working yeah. a shit ton of overtime, so... It's long for me because I haven't been working. Yeah. Like, my time just drags, so... Yeah, I unfortunately don't have that problem. <laughs> I kind of wish I did, because right now I'm just praying. We need for to vacation. we need to like even out. We need right? to like even out what we've got going Jesus, on. Jesus, I'm praying for vacation right now. Yeah, right now I'm looking at around 53 hours of work this week. I worked 50 hours last oh, week, so that'd be so awesome. Yeah, <laughs> for me, yeah, dude. Overtime is awesome, and I love it. But I s- hate working it. But I love the paychecks. Yep. So. Yeah. So what's been going on in your world this week, sir? Uh really not really a whole lot. Oh really? That's that's <laughs> yeah. Uh I've I've had uh the week to gather some uh San Diego Comic Con coverage, which is what we're gonna be talking about awesome. predominantly on this show. Yes, yes, yes. But uh what's what's been going on with you? Nothing, man. I got a neat little toy. Oh uh it's uh it's not really a toy. I guess nope. it's a tool. And I'll take pictures of it so that way we can have this up. But it's uh it's a tactical practical pin is what it is. It's technically it's a tactical pin is what it is, and it's got this neat little poker thing on the end. And what it has on the other end is an actual pin that you can write with, and it is refillable. It's, it's uh reverse threaded on this end. Adam saw me earlier. It takes a while to screw it off, but it's reverse threaded on that end, and you can pop out the. Yeah, you thing. may have to hold it up a little bit higher for the camera. Oh yeah, then you can. Uh, damn it, I had forgot this reverse thread. Reverse thread. Reverse it's thread, dude. And it always, gets me every fucking yeah. time because I'll, you know, ever since I was knee high to a grasshopper, it was left, righty tidy, lefty loosey. Yep. All the time. And then whenever you have something like this, because this is regular thread, this is reverse thread. So, so for all of you that are listening to but, the show, who yeah, can't you actually can, see this. You can check that out, man. It's a it's a black pin. It's got a uh, zombie zombie zombie. Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's called a, the penetrator. Yes, it's the zombie penetrator. So not it's only got is a very it very like, sharp, cool. Uh, it's a little novel, novelty thing, almost made in the USA. Yeah, but it's it's really heavy. It's it's uh, it features Fisher Space Pin cartridge, grab cap for quick draw, lanyard hole, HD stainless steel clip attaches almost anywhere, ergonomic slim non-slip thread. design, window breaker and rescue tool. Uh, yeah, the rescue tool and window breaker are the little pointy thing. I guess it's like rescue. I'm yeah. gonna stab you in the fucking temple with it or the eyeball yeah i mean if you had this this is a this will but that tip is really pointy and really pretty stiff dude this this will keep assholes off of on uh what bath salts yeah right (laughs) off your ass for a little while exactly but it's 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 and that can be sharpened as well yeah yeah it's well i mean you really you really wouldn't want to sharpen it though it's already a pretty good point so you really don't want to well, carry case, that around in your pocket or on a lanyard on your chest and bend over and poke the hell out of yourself. So. Yeah, I mean, you want it to be a little bit pokey, but not too pokey. But yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. Uh, yeah, a buddy of mine from work ordered it from me from uh, Bottac Bottac dot com b o t a c h dot com, and so yeah, it, it's and it's made in the USA. So support your local USA company, I guess, or whatever. Yeah. but yeah, it's it's a neat little. Novelty, well, and it's got a hole through it, so you can actually wear it as a necklace. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's it's. it's I wonder if that piece pops off. Uh, so a lanyard hole. <laughs> well, it actually like you can. I mean, if you feel that, also you can take it and hit somebody. Hit somebody with the butt end of it, or you can also jab them with the pin, with the well, not the pin, but the pointy end also. So it's it's kind of a. Now, if they had that in a sharpie, I'd be good. Right. I'd, buy, I'd have to I'd buy one then. But. Does everybody ask if we autograph? They're like. <laughs> well, with with my audio engineering, dude, I always got to mark boards. But I know, dude. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> with with red sharpie already, so just like, oh my right. god, I'm bleeding. Nah, it's just red sharpie. You got red you're, on you. You're a dick. Right. 
But uh, yeah, that, that, that's that's my little toy that I got this week. Uh, as you can tell, I, I work uh, since I work a lot of overtime. I'm getting new shit like every week just because I have no time to spend my money and find other shit to spend it on. Pretty and, much. And since I'm not working, I'm not spending money on <laughs> shit. <laughs> right, so dude. it's it works out, I guess. Uh, so. Like I said, I hadn't really been doing much throughout the week, but over the weekend, over last weekend, well, when this airs, um, San Diego Comic-Con or Comic-Con International or whatever the yes. fuck they're calling it these days, uh, will have been about a week. So when this is released, it'll be done for about a week. So I tried to pick up some highlights. I spent most of my weekend online watching live coverage, getting as much crap as I could. Obviously, you can't get everything. Yeah. But I tried to get some highlights. And uh, one of the weird things, I, I and I didn't know this, that MTV has a MTV geek. <laughs> yeah. This doesn't um, make any sense. Which they had. I, it was cool because they had live coverage. It was weird because um, their, their little VJs or hosts or whatever you want to call them these days. I don't know. They used to be VJs. Yeah, but they I don't, don't know what they videos call anymore. Now. Um, really out of their depth. It was kind of funny to watch because these cats had no clue. Uh, I, I watched the uh, Gentle Giant presentation. They awesome. did a little Gentle Giant thing with some some of the busts that they were doing, some of the exclusive busts there, uh, which I got to say the the Ralph McQuarrie uh, uh, Stormtrooper. Stormtrooper kicks ass. Did you see the, uh, what's it called? It's like the Deadpool family or whatever almost. No, I didn't see that one. That one was pretty neat. There's like a, a like a Deadpool uh, squirrel pool, mm -hmm. um, shit, like baby pool, mama pool, or something like that. There's like four yeah. different. Yeah, it's it was, and of course they all have like, but the squirrel pool was actually a uh, Gentle Giant SDCC exclusive last year, and so it's driving people crazy because it was a variant this year. So because it had a different color handles on it and. Blah blah blah. So people go absolutely ape shit over that type of stuff, which it it does drive you nuts. I'm I'm the type of collector that is like, oh, it's on a different card. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I don't really necessarily have to have it. I will want it, but I won't be like break my neck to try to fucking yeah. find it or whatever. You know? Well, um, what I did get from MTV was actually from their MTV News site, and uh, it was the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Marvel Legends version three figures that are coming oh, out. Oh yeah, dude. that they were showing, and these were pretty kick ass. So I'm gonna list through some of these that I thought would be interesting for people. Uh, Archangel, which is one of my favorite, um, as far as like design. Did like you see the SDCC exclusive Marvel Legends uh, Archangel three pack thing? No. Oh, dude, it looked amazing. Yeah, it, of course it sold out. Like it's oh, a yeah. the show, but anyways, go ahead. No, I'm there's sorry. there's like uh, oh. there's so many. Um, I I didn't like worry about like the exclusives that were just happening with that. I, that's more your area of expertise. Yeah, but uh, these were just sort of the general toy line. So Archangel, Captain America, which you got to check out if you haven't seen it. Um, it's actually really badass. All right, uh, Doctor Doom. The what they call the neoclassical Iron Man, which is the Iron Man from the eighties oh, okay. time set. Um I think it was before the Silver Centurion armor, if I remember correctly. Uh not my favorite armor, but it's pretty cool. Uh Punisher and then Red She Hulk. And there were some more that they were showing as well, but yeah. those were the ones that but I But they have a uh, Red She Hulk and uh Green She Hulk in that line. Don't they both? I think. Well, Red, no, Red She Hulk was she premiered in this line, and then yeah. uh, and She Hulk think, was the one that they had. I think they've had that one previously. Well, yeah, the, I mean, I mean yeah, and these are the Marvel Legends uh, six-inch figures. Yeah, well, see, I was I was listening to a thing tonight, and they were giving a rundown, and I think there's there's two She Hulks. I know there's a red one coming out in this line also, and then I think there's I guess there's only the other green She Hulk or whatever. I'm not really sure how many She Hulks there are, but. But yeah. I yeah I think there's a red and a green one. I I haven't followed any of the Hulk yeah, continuity. Dude, yeah, like, not with She Hulk, dude. I sure as hell haven't. So I got no fucking. I mean, clue. like I, I've never like I've I've always stated like I'm I've, I like the Hulk when he's teamed up with other people, but yeah. I'm not a huge like uh, Hulk follower. Like I'm my guy's Iron Man. Yeah. And even now, like I'm still several like 
storylines behind of what you know i need to be up with iron man to to figure out everything that's going on but yeah so that was that was from mtv news and i thought well that was actually some pretty good coverage we got uh some of the images up there for people to look at um panels i i pulled some stuff from different panels and for comic-con Here's the thing, like, Hollywood's kind of started to depart from Comic-Con a little bit, which is cool, because eh, they don't really need to be there. But, I mean, obviously, Marvel had a huge presence oh, at... Oh, dude, Marvel, at, yeah. Uh, uh, and I'm not talking about just the comic books, I'm talking about the movies. And yeah, the well, since, I guess since, like, the first Iron Man movie came out, like, every year, Marvel's just been going in there and being like... Check out our balls. Look at our balls. They're huge. Don't you love our balls? And people are like, yes, we yes. love your balls, Marvel. <laughs> love your balls. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, definitely. And so um, at the Marvel panels, I picked up all the, the – they made the announcements of all the movies that are coming out. Uh, and you were texting me this earlier. But uh, Captain oh, yeah. America 2, The Winter Soldier. Um, That's fucking awesome, dude. Like, uh, I got to say, dude, like I – and we all kind of figured it anyways, you know, whenever Bucky flies out the, the uh, hole the in the train. Yeah. And if this is a fucking spo- folks, yeah. Dude, if this is... I'm not even going to say spoiler alert, because if you haven't seen the movie by now, it's like two what years. What are you doing or, watching or listening to our yeah, podcast? Right. Well, it's a, year, it's a year old now. Yeah. But... Um, Fuck you, go see it. Right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fucking rent it, dude. It's a great movie. It's actually pretty but, good. But, uh, yeah, whenever Bucky flew out the the hole in the side of the train, I was like, Winter Soldier, hello. Yeah, um, yeah I'm waiting for him. To, I really want to see what their bionic arm's going to look like. Right. Because um, Marvel's always done this. Their, their bionic arms have always been this, like, it's silver, and then there's, like, a bunch of lines, like horizontal lines running up it. Yeah. I really want to see what kind of thing that they come up with for the arm for Bucky. Cause, and, and I don't know if anybody's been like, hey, continuity of Captain huh. America was really bad and, and the you know the howling whatevers didn't really actually belong in, in Captain America. <laughs> right. Um, dude, they, they couldn't have done the Bucky storyline now. No. They couldn't have done like... 10 year old Bucky or 8 year old Bucky or 12 year old Bucky or whatever however fucking old Bucky was when he was you know jetting around with Captain America shooting Nazis right that kind of thing doesn't fly so no uh, so yeah I mean I, I didn't hate what they I mean uh, it was an obvious setup if you're familiar with any of the the you know Cap stories of uh, and Winter Soldier which I still need to pick up the original uh, Winter Soldier trade paperback which is one of my that's on my list of shit to get, among many others. <laughs> but uh, getting back to point here. Uh, so Captain America 2, The Winter Soldier, Thor 2, The Darkest World. Yeah. I, I, I got no clue. What is that one supposed to be from, by any chance? Do you get, do you... I, I don't know what they're going to do with it. Yeah. I, I, again, Thor is not one of the people that I followed closely, but... Um, I don't know. I, I'm kind of excited to see what they come up with. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, which will be pretty cool because this is gonna. This is instantly gonna be a team movie. Oh yeah. So it's it's a. Uh, I know Adam Warlock is involved somehow. I think Adam Warlock's involved somehow. And uh, um, if 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 you'd like the uh, Guardians of the Galaxy uh, Marvel Hasbro set or whatever, like little. I guess in the Star Wars line they're called battle packs. You get like four figures. Uh, I can pick it up for you at Walmart in Corinth because they still have them there and everybody thought they were going to be hard to find. But, yeah. Anyways. Just... <laughs> uh, so, and uh, Iron Man 3, which I've got pictures of the suit. I've got yes. a couple angles of the suit there for you. Uh, what, do you what do you think about the coloring on that suit, man? I, I like it, but I'm the only person online who's like... I was about to say, dude, everybody is hating it. And I saw it and I was like, I really don't know shit about Iron Man, but I was like, that's actually kind of cool. This is the. This is supposed to be the movie representation of the extremist suit. Okay. Um, the extremist really had nothing to do with the suit itself. It had all. It was more interior about what's yeah, going on. Like his underwear that he wore. Or something well, like yeah. That. I mean, what it what it basically did was turn his electric underwear part as to part of his body. Okay. Yeah. Like it, it, his his uh, skin cells, kind of the way the, Sorry, the comics Pepper, no make him look. 
Well, no, uh, like no, his skin cells. What happens is that his his arm, like it, kind of, they kind of like flip over, and like, oh. they they turn into the interior skin of the suit. Whoa, and crazy. so it's yeah, I mean, it, like if you've ever seen, like go on Netflix, go check out uh, Iron Man Extremist, the the motion comic. It'll like Batman will never be as dark as what that <laughs> Iron Man will be, and uh, the subsequent stories that go after that are awesome and so dark and so like they take you into a really dark place with that but uh this is going to be one of those movies where i'm like oh i don't know if i'm going to be all for it or not because they can't use norman osborne oh yeah and they've got an iron patriot look-alike which is supposed to be the new war machine okay i did find out a thing about the iron patriot thing the Iron Patriot is just like a uh, kind of uh, like almost like a gag bit in the movie or whatever. Okay. So it is in the movie, but it is not Iron Patriot. And, no, it's from what from what I've because there are several rumors going on with that about yeah. like oh well there's this this bad guy who's like actually a robot who's going to be Iron Patriot, and then basically what everybody's been saying ever since then is that that's actually War Machine post Avengers world. Like the president's always under lock and key kind of thing because they don't want an invasion attacking the world leaders kind of thing. But if it's like a gag, that would be kind of awesome. Yeah. So uh, I'd, I'd be all for that. Um, and then one of the things that I'm kind of excited about, Edgar Wright. Do you do you know that name? Jesus, what the hell is this? It like? sounds familiar, but you're you're not quite there. Yeah. Well, he's the guy who directed Scott Pilgrim. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, yeah. He's the... Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And yeah. he's going to be... Well, he actually showed test footage of Ant-Man. Yeah. And so uh, no one's officially said Ant-Man's going to happen yet, but they've showed test footage of... He showed test footage of Ant-Man at the Marvel panel, and people... I think people went nuts for that. Yeah, that's... that's... The other Marvel news... Good grief, there's so much shit going on with Marvel. Uh, they announced a Deadpool video game. Hey, Internet! We got a video for you to see. Ooh, is it the video with the two girls? Oh, there, champ. Not safe for work. Oh, man, those are our favorite videos. No, we love videos set to melodramatic music and slow motion. We love videos with boobies. Ugh, so is this a video or what? It's a game. A game starring yours truly. Come on, let's scratch that Deadpool itch. Bang, 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 bang. Bouncy. More bouncy. <laughs> Best ride ever! <laughs> Open wide! Now let's be honest. I'm not the only one with a little bit of shit in their pants right now, am I? <laughs> so... That itch satisfied enough for you? Actually, if you could just reach down and- Oh, hey! Thanks, dudes. We'll be in touch. Call me. Suck it, Wolverine. And then Marvel's working on their relaunch, relaunch which is going to be called Marvel Now. Uh, the only things I've seen is they've got uh, a series that they're going to... What they're doing is mixing Avengers and X Men together. Right now, they're fighting each other. It's yeah, Avengers yeah. versus X Men. Apparently, something's gonna make them come together. Possibly the Phoenix Force. Oh, fighting a common foe. <laughs> um, yeah. Sometimes I hate when you're starting to like see how things are panning out. But um, yeah. So Marvel's. It's not a reboot. This is something that I I gotta give Marvel credit for because DC's driving driving me nuts with the reboots and shit. Uh, Marvel kind of sticks with continuity. They might create another universe, like Ultimates, for example. Yeah. But um, this isn't a this isn't a reboot. This is sort of a continuation. So they're going to have like Uncanny 
instead of Uncanny X Men, they're going to have Uncanny Avengers. Oh, okay. Stuff like that. They're kind of you know doing a doing a mashup of their characters. Um, there have been some significant changes. Thor's got swords. There's some Whoa. weird shit going on with Hulk that I, I don't know. And again, I don't follow Hulk's storyline. I know there's like right now the Hulk storyline is called Stay Angry. So Banner inter- and like in- internally, I guess, is like fucking with Hulk to keep him angry for something. But yeah, uh, but that's it for for the Marvel stuff. Let me get into DC. For an event called Comic Con, I'm severely disappointed in you, DC. Just, just, just real fast. Uh, this, before you really get into DC, there's a few things. Uh, if you're a real big Marvel fan, go check out the stuff that Sideshow is doing now for Marvel. They have this epic, epic, epic uh, Hulk statue that they're doing, and it's huge, massive, and it's it's probably gonna be it's probably gonna retail somewhere around like a thousand dollars or whatever. But it's just amazing it is amazing and then there's a uh deadpool one also that's really really cool i don't really know shit about deadpool um don't really care to know much about deadpool i don't know it's just one of those characters i mean he looks cool but he's never really reached out and grabbed me by the butthole and been like hey check out my stuff but uh the deadpool see the thing is that my continuity with deadpool was during the original x-force run and he wasn't that interesting of a character yeah and now that they've made him really crazy and he breaks the fourth wall and little thought bubbles pop up and you see it, he sees the thought bubbles and shit like yeah. that. And so like um like uh, you'll see the I'll show you the clip of the video game. He's he's actually really funny and really entertaining and so I think that's why people dig him now. But my continuity that I understand from from Deadpool, he was just a boring, generic, like Spider Man looking character. Yeah. See that's that's exactly the reason why I look at him, I'm like, Yeah, he looks cool, he looks a lot like Spider Man. I just he uses guns. I don't know. I don't really dig on it, but I, I will say, uh, like this, this, the statue by Sideshow looks. It's Sideshow, so it's gonna look badass, dude. They knocked it out of the park. But uh, yeah, man. Uh, shit, there was one other. I don't. Anyways, that's it. I can't think of. I should have wrote this stuff down and like come up with actual <laughs> stuff, things, but, yeah, stuff and st- things, stuff and things, stuff and junk. Uh, so yeah, let me get into DC's panel a little bit. Um. I had to look. I had to dig for like DC stuff. Um, they they premiered a couple of things with the Man of Steel. They they premiered the Man of Steel poster. Yes. And then um, the other thing they did was that they showed the trailer that will be put on top of the new Batman movie. Oh, okay. So uh, Dark Knight Rises will have the the Man the of super, Steel. Their Man of Steel. Oh, that's Superman cool. trailer to it when you go and see it. So those were the like that was like the most interesting news. Most of what DC did from what I've gathered from everybody else is uh they spent most of their time defending their um New Fifty Two. No, no. They well they did talk about New Fifty Two a little bit. They've got New Fifty Two's been around for almost a year now. Yeah. So everybody's almost at the twelve issue mark. There's been some comics that are cut. They're gonna do uh some new comics that are coming out that's gonna be called New Fifty Two Wave Two. <laughs> Clever. Yeah, and there's some things happening in that. I'll talk about that in just a second. So, um but what they mostly talked about, what they mostly did was that they had to basically defend um the wa- the new Watchmen series. Oh, the new Watchmen so were prequels. people ripping them assholes about it or what? I don't know what it was, but like mo- from from most of the stuff that I was gathering from like I don't know how many different websites I went to. I had to like seriously dig for DC stuff. Really? And and it's like, man, you shouldn't do that at a, at Comic Con International. That large, man. It's like it it really is. You know, there should be some new stuff yeah. coming out. They should be announcing. I mean, honestly, on DC side. Like I know it's Comic Con, but right now the movie market is kind of where it's at. Marvel's kind of laid it out, man. It's like, yeah. hey, dude, we're we're in the movies now, and our movies are good, and they're in continuity, and our heroes work together in the same world. They've kind of kicked some ass at that, and so now it's DC. It's time to like turn around and and actually, you know, when they when they announced like Dark Knight Rises and and the Man of Steel, the first yeah. thing they said were like these movies aren't in continuity. They don't know each other. 
We're just Damn making. It, we're just putting it out there that you're never going to see Sp- uh, Superman and, and Batman, and you're not going to see you know Batman, you know, standing on a building watching Superman. So play or anything like that. That's, no Justice League. Not yet. I mean, there's still there's still hope for a Justice League movie, but it's yeah. it's not going to be. You're not going to get this Superman and this Batman from these movies. It's not going to happen. Um, what they did talk about though, um, was. The new Green Lantern stuff that's going to be happening. Green Lanterns with guns, which is... Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people had the same reaction that I have, because I think Jeff Johns has done a, an amazing job with the Green Lantern Corps and, and all the stuff they've been going on with Green Lantern. Um, but giving the Lanterns guns, I think, is probably going to be a big mistake. The whole idea was that, like, the you know, the... The Guardians are kind of making poor decisions. Yeah. And the idea behind it is if your ring runs out of juice, you got a gun. Oh. Well, what about just recharging it with the lantern? Well, you don't always have the lantern with you. Oh, okay. I got you. Do you always always carry your iPhone charger with you? Uh, No. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) (laughs) I make sure to charge my iPhone before I go into battle. I have have my... uh, Yeah, yeah. uh, I'm... (laughs) By I just battle, imagine. I mean, work. I, I just imagine like any any particular Green Lantern going to bed at night and and plugging his uh, <laughs> ring into his USB ring. port right. of his computer so it'll charge, or or so got to download conversion. those new updates to the rings. Yeah, uh, yeah. I always wonder if like you know do the do the rings have to get like do they have the uh, you, you know human sense, human <laughs> sense iPad like right. updates to the rings. You're du- you dumbass. You're not even texting me with. <laughs> what is it? I chat or I talk? I chat, yeah. I chat. You're not even texting me with ring chat. <laughs> you must be using. You're using the old <laughs> OS, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, that oh, would be shit. that. That would be a brilliant. I would love to see that comic where right. like half the Lantern Corps didn't update their update up, the rings. Yeah, didn't yeah. didn't like click on the agreement. Uh, but uh, so there's a couple things that are going on with the with the Green Lantern Corps that I'm interested in to kind of see what happens. Uh, Kyle Rayner is uh, going to master all of the spectrum of the rings. Like the, he's going to be the ultimate lantern. I don't know what you would call that guy. The, the Rainbow Lantern. I guess yeah. so. Like <sighs> there's already a White Lantern, and if you're going by the light spectrum, that's all the colors. Oh, wait. But uh, is he the one that's there? Turning out to be making him gay or whatever. You really want I'm, to go there? I'm trying no. to be. Pl- I'm trying to be. P- I'm trying to be PC about it, but I'm all like, dude, if he's mastering all the colors of the ring, then he's no, like, no, that's the uh, and I don't the Alan Rainbow something. Warrior. No, that's I think is Alan something, and I can't uh, remember. I like know, again, this is not a continuity that I follow. Uh, he's actually here's here's the thing with the gay Green Lantern. He is not part of the Green Lantern Corps. He okay. was the original Green Lantern. So they kicked him out. So they're they're sexist or whatever you want to call it. They're no, they're no. not equal opportunity employees. His ring is magic. It is not technical. The other re- oh. Green Lantern's rings are actually technology. It's not run by magic. His his name Green Lantern is by name alone. Mm. But he was the original Green Lantern. So, but he has no tie into the other Green Lantern Corps or anything like that. Plus. He is not of this Earth. That Green Lantern is of Earth 2. So if you really want to get into the, the gay Green Lantern debate and how much balls it took to do it, it's a Green Lantern that they're not using on Earth 2. Okay, I'm seriously confused, so he should... Yeah. He should be not even looking at humans, anyways. He'd be like, I don't know. Well, I mean, he's uh, the identical monster. Over they there just looks started. Pretty fucking hot. They just started in the new Fifty Two. They just started their new Earth Two run. I don't know anybody that follows Earth Two. I don't know any like Earth Two enthusiasts. Yeah. I'm assuming that Earth Two, in the way that like I look at the Ultimates in the in the Marvel universe. Fuck the Ultimates, dude. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I don't want to see everybody like twenty years younger. I don't fucking care. Yeah. So I'm assuming that there's probably some DC cats who have that sort of same thought process behind Earth too. It's like, oh, there's another universe continuity. Oh yay. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's an Earth two Green Lantern, original Green Lantern that really doesn't get used much. He's gonna be in the background. It's here. Here's the thing about that debate. It's like if you're gonna. It, 
DC, Marvel, both of you should be smacked upside your head. If you're going to make a character gay and you're going to sit there and, and announce it as a gay character, make it a fucking main character. Right. Don't do this bullshit of like, we're going to bury this guy behind, you know, Earth to original, blah, blah, this character that we're not really using. Um, same thing with Marvel. Marvel did their big gay issue. They they did their big gay <laughs> issue. Like both of them did big gay <laughs> issues. Both of them have big gay issues. Um, the, the, DC did theirs. Gay <laughs> <laughs> it's dude. It's it, it's ridiculous. Don't you think I look good in this hat? <laughs> <laughs> but so DC did theirs. Made a Green Lantern that's not relevant to the Green Lantern storylines. Yeah. And then what Marvel did was make uh, had two mutant guys. Uh, get married. No one's heard of these fuckers before. <laughs> I've never heard of these fuckers before. I've never seen them before. I have no idea who they are. I just remember seeing it all on Facebook. It was yeah, it was all over Facebook, yeah. and a lot of people were like, "Yay, up with Marvel, Facebook. up with DC." Yeah. And it's like, okay, I I get it, but like, why don't you turn? I'll, I'll just toss one out there. Hank McCoy, Beast from X Men, make him gay, right? There's no there's no tie-ins to like I'm sure he's had girlfriends in past continuities or something like that. Dude, maybe him and Thing can get it on, dude, from well, the Fantastic Four. You uh, know? I'm not going there, but I'm just saying like <laughs> the Thing has a girlfriend. She's she's blind. But uh she's probably like but I'm just saying rock hard cock is what it is. <laughs> God damn it. I'm really trying to avoid that. But what I'm saying is like I, I would like to if they're gonna do it and they're gonna announce it, at least be be actually bold about it and do it. Right. So that's my that's my little soapbox about it. I don't like I don't care. I really don't care. <laughs> no, I feel you. But uh anyway, so hey. moving on to the other panels. Dexter season seven. Awesome. Away from the body. Deb, it's me. It was on the altar. Travis Marshall. Sixter, what the f Talk to me. Did you lower your gun? Please. I came to do one last forensic sweep like you asked me to do and Travis was here. He came at me with his sword. I fought him off. I knocked him out. How did he end up wrapped in plastic on the altar? I snapped. You snapped? What does that mean? There's been a lot of anger inside me ever since Rita died. When I looked at Travis and thought about everything he did, I just wanted him dead, and so I killed him. Dexter. I know. It still doesn't explain why he's wrapped up like that. I didn't even think about it. I'm a forensics expert. I guess it's just second nature not to leave a trace. Jesus, Dex. Who are you calling? Station. I've got to get everyone down here. No. <sighs> Um, they did a Judge Dread preview. I don't have the preview, but I've got the trailer, so I'll show the trailer. Time is passing at one percent its normal speed. We get 
If we play this right, we could take the whole city. Peachtree's is the manufacturing base for all the slow mo in Mega City One. You know how often we get a judge off in Peace Trees? Well, you got one now. She has control of everything. Levels one to 200. This is Mama. Somewhere in this block are two judges. That's not good. I want him dead. We're gonna have to go through him. Rookie, you ready? Yeah. You look ready. Fire! Judgment time. Let's finish this. Sylvester Stallone. Uh, you should see it just for the cheese factor alone. Yeah, that's what I, I am the law. The law. The law. <laughs> yeah, it's <that's> awesome. <laughs> and that was actually pretty decent, too. <laughs> that sounds fucking awesome. It's pretty cool. And then uh, Robocop, the new Robocop reboot. Imagine your city with no crime, where a policeman's life is never at risk. Thanks to Omnicorp, you can protect your city with our full line of products. The XT908 area drones watch over our citizens. The ED209 protects our battlefields and now our cities. And in the coming months, we will unveil our newest and most exciting innovation yet, where human resources meets robotic engineering. The RC2000, the next generation of defensive products. Omnicorp, we've got the future under control. Protect your city today. Go to www.omnicorp.com for more information. I think that's about all I got from comic-con anything you want to add to that there is one other thing of marvel news i'm a I'm, i like marvel so i keep up with a bunch of marvel stuff but there's one other thing for marvel that i really want to talk about because i think it's really really awesome and it's by fx collectibles it's efx but it's pronounced fx fx collectibles uh as in th- special effects exactly but they do some amazing stuff man oh god bless dude uh, just try to go to their site and find something for under 500 bucks, pretty much. Let's put it that way. They do a bunch of amazing Star Wars work. Uh, they just started doing some uh, uh, Marvel stuff. They've done. Uh, they've got. They've got it coming out. Uh, Thor helmet, uh, Cap helmet, uh, Iron Man helmet that they're still in production. You know, working on or whatever. And it's going to be what they plan on doing is actually having it motorized. Uh huh. Like it flips up and down and lights up and all. And you, so are these helmets you can actually wear? Yeah, they're helmets that you can actually wear. And so uh, this shit's real. Expensive. So yeah, it's yeah exactly. So the the helmets they were saying were somewhere around like five five ninety nine, but the Iron God. Man one they're they're projecting at like a thousand just because of all the extra shit. Yeah, and I'm sure the eyes are gonna <laughs> light up and. They're doing a Mjolnir uh, hammer around four ninety nine, uh, cap shield around four ninety nine. That's not bad. Um. But the one things that I'm really, 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 really stoked about, and they're actually really cheap, they're under a hundred bucks, believe it or not, some posters, and they're the World War II propaganda Captain America posters, man. That uh, what they they're actually uh, Marvel sent them the JPEG file, and they just pretty much just printed them off and are selling them as posters. 
So I'm stoked. I really want to get them. Only a, only a hundred bucks? No, 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 no. They're under. They're like they were. Fi- they they had a special pricing for fifteen dollars at the convention. Fifteen dollars or all three of them for forty. Oh, okay. So uh, so so it's actually like so it's reasonably actually, priced. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not affordable. like they're like it's under a hundred dollars. It's ninety nine ninety nine. <laughs> right, no, uh, they they have those. Uh, I don't know what their the price is on the site because, like I said, that was fi- that fifteen dollars each or the three for forty bucks was the convention pricing. But since uh, it's not the convention anymore, I haven't gone to their website to check out to see what the price of those are. But uh, EFX Collectibles, or FX Collectibles is how it's pronounced, go by and check them out. They also have the uh, Captain America trading cards that uh, Agent Coulson had in the Avengers. With bloodstains? Uh, they have them with and without bloodstains. Are you fucking kidding I'm me? I'm not kidding you at all. <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, I, uh, I really want those posters, though, because uh, one of her, one of her Captain America, one of they did Captain America, and we might have, uh, I might have talked about it on the show. One of the things that they did for the crew that was like, son of a bitch, I wish I had one of those, is they did a uh, Captain America propaganda poster and gave it yeah. out to the crew. Yeah, I heard and about they that. were amazing. They were so looked so awesome, and so I really want to get these posters. Those would be so. those would be pretty badass to have. Yeah, I think they look pretty good hanging up in here and too. For, so. Only ninety nine ninety nine. Right. Well, but they're a steal. I don't. I don't think they're quite ninety nine ninety nine. Well, I hope not. But they were like, like I said, they they were fifteen dollars at the convention. So I'm thinking probably somewhere around twenty to around twenty two bucks per poster, maybe. And then maybe they're maybe they'll have some sort of package deal to where if like if you buy all three of them, you get them for like fifty bucks, fifty bucks instead of forty yeah, or something. Yeah, I'd so. go. I'd go twenty a pop. Yeah, I would too, man. Just because they're pretty badass, man. So, uh, I really want to check those out. I really want to pick those up. But that's that's. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, there are still some. If you go to HasbroToyShop dot com slash SDCC exclusives, I think is what it is. You can still pick up some of the exclusives that Hasbro had. There's some. Ah, damn it, they went on sale this afternoon, and I wasn't around the computer. Uh, they had the. Carbonite set for Star Wars that I really wanted to get uh, had an actual Jar Jar and Carbonite in it too. Did so, it really? Yeah. Um, they had uh, what was really cool was the Avengers Helicarrier. They called it the Super Helicarrier. Oh, dude! Have like, you have you seen the rumor about the box design for for the uh, Avengers DVD set? Huh? Is it a helicarrier? There's well, and is that it's for the and special rumor, edition for the, one, or for the one that you had talked about? Yeah. I think what I think it's going to be is a metal briefcase. Oh. Okay. That's what I think it's going to be. Yeah. But the rumor that people were showing and showing this little diagram of was a helicarrier. Really. That would open up and have different DVDs or that different Blu-rays. I, I well, I think. That's probably extremely unpractical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, there's too many. I mean, it would bend- be cool to have a, a it, Helen Keller in, then like where the the a Helen Keller. Uh, yeah, a Helen Keller. <laughs> just keeps on like running into Jesus shit. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> it can't see or talk. We're it just, here. Just falls down. And falls. <laughs> but yeah, man, it'd be, it'd be really off. cool as if it was a Helen Keller in like. Where the uh, helos would be at would be like the discs or yeah, whatever. That that's, would be that's really, what really the cool. design was. Where like where those where those are at, they open up and then it reveals like a two disc set. On yeah, that would be one. really impractical though. That would um, be huge yeah, pack. too many bending parts. Yeah, but I think what it's going to be is like a metal briefcase. That'd be badass would, though. You know, look like it would be holding a uh, like cosmic the tesseract. Cube, yeah, the tesseract cosmic cube. Something with a blue light. That would be sick. Dude. But y- yeah, I mean, the other one sounds like that. The briefcase sounds more practical. Yeah. So I'm gonna go. My vote is it's gonna be briefcase. There's a lot of people who are like helicarrier. Right. It's gonna be helicarrier. So we'll find out. I don't. I don't know. I don't think it'll be the helicarrier. There yeah. is uh, there is one SDCC exclusive by Hasbro that's still available as of this recording. Now, whenever this gets published, I'm not 100 percent sure. But uh, Spider Man Mighty Mugs and it's it they're adorable, dude. I really want to get them. They're mini mugs and uh, the package. The package. Now is this to me, for is this for Amazing Spider Man? Uh, I don't. I think it's just regular Spider Man. Uh, because it's uh, Carnage, Venom, Spider Man, uh, uh, crap, J Jonah Jameson, and damn it, one of the uh, goblins, not. 
Green Goblin, Hobgoblin. What's the other one? Almost like Demi, Demo, Demo Goblin, Demo Goblin, or something like that. I don't know. That I one. never even heard of this dude, and I was like, huh? But yeah, he he's got it really cool. Um, but, Iron Man, I follow Iron Man. Right? But the uh, <laughs> Spider Man does exist occasionally. The packaging is awesome. The packaging sells it. It's almost like a Empire State Building. And it's got them all lined up. You know, it's got two here, two here, two here. And then Spider-Man is a single one at the top, but he's upside down. Like he's hanging from his web, so. Yeah, that reminded me of, uh, I was just kind of going through some, because I, I kind of want to get the uh, the Amazing Spider-Man 20 point, 30 point, or two. Oh, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Three and three quarter. But I was, I was like, well, what I'd want is to have like, OG Spider-Man and then Amazing Spider-Man kind of next to each other so you could make the comparison in the costumes. Yeah. Um, wave 1 I think of the Marvel series mm -hmm. Spider-Man is packaged upside down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually really, really cool. He's like, he's squatted upside down yeah. in the packaging. I was like, man you wouldn't, I wouldn't want to open the package then. Right. Because I'm a, I'm a package opener. I will open the package. I, I open my Marvel figures. I keep mine. If it just depends on how many. Like if I, I sometimes buy extras of Star Wars and keep one mint on card and one, you know, that I can open up and fuck but around. That with Spider Man, I'd want mint on card. Like, yeah, dude, that Spider Man would be awesome. Yeah. So. But uh, yeah, so I think that's gonna do it for anything. San Diego Comic Con or Comic Con International or whatever the hell they're calling it these days. Uh, hope you found that entertaining. Yes. Maybe you found some things that you uh, wanted to. There was uh, there is one last thing I'll talk about. Um, there there's a, a Munsters reboot that's going to be happening. Really? And it's called Mockingbird Lane. Oh, that's right. I've heard about this. Who? The, um. And it's a fam it's a famous guy who's like working on it, and I can't remember. Yeah, and they've already got a few people cast for it, and I can't remember who the hell they said they. I can't remember who it was they cast as Herman. I was like, <laughs> that's a fucking good cast, man. Like. Oh uh, shit! Who was it? I don't know. I, I'm not gonna be able to think of it, dude. But yeah, um, I'd be like Ron Perlman, Herman Munster. Right? <laughs> Is it thick makeup? Let's put Ron Perlman in it. Right. I wanna, no I wanna shit. See that. Uh, he's making too much money on Sons of Anarchy right now. Probably. probably so. Yeah. Well, he did, dude. Uh, I did post this up on our Facebook. Um, like one of those like wish kids foundation types of things. Yeah, I saw that as uh, where, where uh, Hellboy. The kid, the kid wanted to. I don't know if he wanted to be Hellboy or meet Hellboy, but Ron Perlman signed on, and went full makeup. Because that's that dude. That's got to be at least a four to six hour makeup. Oh, chair dude, I imagine bit. so. And Jesus. went in full makeup as Hellboy and visited the kid, and then they and then the kid was like, ah, oh, they they put the kid in Hellboy makeup afterwards yeah. too. So that was kind of cool. So, good happy note. So, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back after these few messages. Oh, we're back. What's up, dude? What the fuck was that? <laughs> From fucking Mallrats, dude. I didn't know we were ready. Oh, my bad. <laughs> that was... <laughs> Well, I guess we were kind of... We could do it again if you want to. <laughs> no, that's fine. We're back, folks. Hey, how's it going? Look, it, we're not the too The consummate polished. professionals we are. <laughs> well, I figured we could switch it up every week and so, you know, maybe snap through Back, back, back in the room, room, timed wrong. Right. See, yeah. you uh, do you ever watch our shows? I do. Do you? Yeah, like, I haven't uh, watched that one. That one where... Yeah. The ad placement. I'm still learning ad placement, folks. Yeah, I, I watch. I didn't watch and the please, whole one. And, and just please sit through the two commercials. It's there. It's fine. <laughs> I didn't watch the whole one. I watched most of it. Let's put it that way. Ah, okay. Yeah. I haven't watched this one. The when this up right now with the green screen. I need to check that one out. So. <laughs> anyway, it's, anyway. it's green screen. Green screen. <laughs> I have a uh, a hand that evidently gets exposed to gamma radiation, but doesn't turn green at one point. In time. It just gets bigger. It just gets bigger and and uh, slows down time. Right. You have a section of your shirt that has like a time vortex right. on it <laughs> that moves around at different. I get like the infinity gauntlet bed yeah, in my shirt or something. The infinity fingers. <laughs> so uh, we're moving on to news, and uh, I'm going to start off with New Comic Wednesday.
So, new comic Wednesday for July 25th. Uh, nothing special, no Slurpees or anything on July 25th. Damn just, it, it is, man. But it is new comic Wednesday. Here's some comic All picks right. for then. Uh, before Watchmen, The Comedian Number 2, um, I watched a review over The Comedian Number 1, and um, kind of interesting. Uh, I don't know they didn't like it, but uh, <laughs> the, the, the thing that they did with The Comedian... Like you know, you haven't you don't know anything about why I have no idea. Like I'm I'm trying to figure out if he's actually like just a comedian that they wrote a comic book about or if he's supposed to be like a superhero that like he's tells a, really he's bad a, jokes. he is very much like the Joker in the aspect that um life is funny to him, but he's he's just a fucker. Oh, uh, okay, I guess. Uh he he uh, attempted to rape um the Spectre chick. And I'm sorry, folks. I'm not the biggest Watchmen fan, so I don't know all the characters' name. I know Rorschach and Doctor Manhattan and the comedian, but the the girl Silk Spectre, that's her name. Oh, okay. uh, he he attempts to rape the first uh, Silk Spectre. He there's a lady that's pregnant with his kid, and and uh, he just shoots her in the stomach. Wow, sounds he's, like a genuine asshole. He is an asshole. He, he's a government-sanctioned asshole. Oh, uh, okay. And so uh, what they did in the and fuck it, most of you people are, are like, fuck the new Watchmen series anyway, so I'm just <laughs> I'm going to fucking spoil it because I don't care. Right. Uh, so the first comic book, he's, he's uh, it's back in the 60s, we're talking, and this is a, an alternate universe timeline. Oh. Uh, where, like, Nixon never got out of the White House. Like, he didn't, he didn't get uh, booted out of the White House. This is, so, but it's, it, during... It's no impeachment of Nixon. No, no right. impeachment of Nixon. This is, yeah, thank you. <laughs> like, <dude laughs> it, I knew it was some fruit. Right. I forgot. Uh, no impeachment no, of Nixon, no but... No an apple mint of Yeah, Nixon. no. <laughs> apple mint? Mm, that shit was right. good at Sounds Comic-Con. Like at, at, uh, but uh, yeah, so this this com- the first one took place uh, during the JFK administration, oh. and he is sent out to assassinate Marilyn Monroe, oh. and then he's sent on another mission, and that's when Kennedy gets assassinated. So it was sort of like, oh, it was an interesting take. Um, if you're someone who's like really into the Kennedys, the Chowda. Uh, and shit like that, then uh, you're going to hate this comic and you're going to hate that they're trying to humanize uh, the comedian, which I got to agree. Like, he's he's a bastard. He's a fucker. And, and, you fucker. Uh, yes, you fucker. <laughs> Big fucker. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So, they're, they're, I don't know if they're trying to humanize him or they're just kind of showing different stuff. Well, I, I don't know. But maybe in, uh, in uh, number two, you can find out if you're really that curious. Um, I don't care. <laughs> uh, Venom number twenty one from Marvel. Seriously, if you haven't been checking out this new uh, Venom series, do it. It's kick ass. Flash Thompson as the new Venom, and he's a good guy. Uh, Green Lantern New Guardians number eleven because uh, I like Green Lanterns right now until they get their guns. Star Wars Blood Ties Boba Fett is dead number four from Dark Horse. Uh did you know that Boba Fett had a family? Um yes. He he's, he's got an ex wife and a kid and yep. he's got a like a s- half brother and shit like that. I will uh, According I'm, according to this continuity, dude, he's got a half brother. Man, it just it, it shit just starts to hurt the head. You find out about his daughter, or not his daughter, but his, he's actually got a granddaughter whenever it comes to the legacy of the Force, I think is the book series or whatever. But Jesus, man. I don't know. Well, in this book, he's got a family, and the guy who presumably killed him yeah. is going after his family now. Oh. Uh, so, if you're... Spoiler alert, but uh, the comic, the, the The comic art on it's the cover art's badass dude that's uh, I will say the, the Dark Horse art is fucking amazing I just uh, another one that you might be interested in and it's a number one that's coming out uh, on the 25th is the Darth Maul death sentence oh okay cool have you heard of this no I haven't uh, well it's uh, here's the here's the premise for it the galaxy knows that Darth Maul is alive and he's joined forces with his brother Savage Opress oh okay so they're going and they are now being hunted down by the Jedi 
and there's a price put on his head by a wealthy mine owner. Hmm. So it's it's not only the Jedi that he's contending with; it's some other guy that's got a bounty out on him. That's cool. So they're actually kind of going along with the uh, Clone Wars storyline. Yeah. The, now him again, and Savage. Um, I I haven't seen any internal shots of the of the comic, but yeah. uh, the cover art is not. Is, is, Make them all. Is that what it's called? I don't know. That's well. What well, he is. Well, he been, he is. He's got his. Called. He's got his robot legs. Yeah. If that's what you're referring to, but no, it's not. It's not in the style of the Clone Wars. Oh, okay. Wars. I got it's, you. Yeah. it's done in that more realistic. Uh, oh artwork. no, that's cool. Yeah. And so it it the cover art again looks really badass. Uh, again from Dark Horse. Uh, one of the comics that I've been meaning to pick up for a long time, and I just haven't had a chance to yet. Uh, the Goon number forty from Dark Horse. Uh, this time. It's uh, you're going back in time a little bit with the goon, back in the days of prohibition, where he's uh he's basically wheeling alcohol back and forth for people, awesome. and then uh, he uh, runs into some rockabilly ghouls, that he's got to go beat on. Fucking cool. Uh, the goon. The badass. goon sounds like a really badass comic, and I've been meaning to pick it up, mostly because I know that the goon in one of his comics runs uh, has a run in with Death Clock. Really? Yeah, it's the <laughs> goon and Death Clock together doing a, cool. doing a story. So I was like, oh, that's fucking badass. Um, w- this is gonna be this is I'm sure this is gonna be like a trade or something like that. It's uh, Wonder Woman Adventures number one. This is just a sort of a collection. It's a family friendly. You got a daughter. You you're trying to get her into comic books, and uh, you don't want all the like super sexy back turning at 90 degree angle kind yeah. of like comic books Check out my uh, ass. yeah look at my ass here's here it is um this might be a good comic to start your kid on if you got a daughter and you're or if, if you're a woman who's and you got a daughter anybody with a daughter or anybody who's like really into wonder woman will probably pick up that series and enjoy it awesome and finally uh hit girl number two from marvel uh again you know it's hey girl hit girl Kick ass. Hey. That's I, I didn't really like that movie. I don't know. Uh I'm sort of torn. I I'm not I, this this goes into my whole like superheroes and reality and comic books thing. Um Kick Ass was severely real. It's and just, so and so it played it played up that practical thing of like, well, if you get beat on, you're gonna get hurt. Yeah. And and uh, you know, and I, it just didn't appeal to me. I mean, it, I, I didn't think, have a problem with the realistic factor. I just didn't like it. And I never thought about it before, but I I don't think I like Nick Cage. <laughs> like outside of The Rock, I'm what not a big. What are you talking Nick about, dude? You don't <laughs> like Nick Cage, man? Come on. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Take the bullet for this. Dollar Bill is trying to tell me something, <laughs> man. <laughs> there's, there's gold in the United right. States. <laughs> Anywho. Anyway, that's that's it for New Comic Wednesday. So uh, we're going to move on to Star Wars news. Yay! Okay, I want to start this off. Um, I've got a little something I'm going to... Uh, from Star Wars Action News. It's a podcast that I really like a lot. And uh, they did a... Uh, after the Hasbro panel on Friday, which I... The Hasbro Star Wars panel on Friday, which I watched most of it on. From San Diego. From Comic-Con? San Diego, because uh, Star Wars Action News was broadcasting broadcasting it live, and that's awesome. I love them for it, but it's full of so much disappointing information. <sighs> Radcast would love to uh, broadcast live from San Diego Comic Con. Yes, yes, we would. I would. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty fucking awesome. But anyways, so we're not giving you the secondhand news that we uh, right. gathered up for this podcast. So. Here's the big disappointment, man. And I'm... I'm uh, No Hasbro Celebration 6 exclusive. Oh, go ahead. Uh, Well, Hasbro last minute for San Diego Comic-Con did a My Little Pony thing. Yeah. And from what I understand, it was very last minute. Like, as last minute as you can make toy productions, you know. And it's my. I don't know how the new ponies are. 
But if they're anything like the old ponies, they were just a molded fucking piece of rubbery plastic with a rubbery plastic head on it. Yeah, no articulation at all. Just, yeah, yeah. Like the head moved left and right. I think yeah, that's, that, that yeah, was I think it. That was and that's not even it. that's not even a joint, guys. That's a it's a ball and socket yeah, type thing. Right. It's, yeah, and it's not even a ball. It's just a <laughs> rotator. It's a rotor rotator cuff thing. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Anyway, sorry. So, anyways, no cele- no Hasbro Celebration Six exclusive, which is horseshit, dude. Uh, I, I don't. I'll get into that in just a minute. Um, so after the cool thing is, is after after the panel, Star Wars Action News had an interview with the panelists from Hasbro. Um, one of the questions was, "Why no Celebration Six exclusive?" And the answer that Hasbro gave was they felt that being able to get Jocasta New out as an exclusive to Brian's toys was a great opportunity, and they just didn't have anything planned for Celebration 6. So, after Hasbro came out and said at Toy Fair back in February that they had a Celebration 6 exclusive, it was going to be in the $20 price range, they decided they're going to do an exclusive for an online distributor, which they do that a lot. They do, uh, and it's going to be the fucking librarian. I'm just waiting you to go like, I call bullshit! Bullshit! Right? <laughs> okay. So, Hasbro, fuck yourself. So, so before I really get into other stuff, it says... Why not share the celebra- uh, celebra- Why not share the San Diego Comic Con exclusive with Celebration Six? Hasbro answer was, "They'd like to, but feel it's important to, to the collectors to keep an exclusive to, cel- to God damn it! Why not keep calling San Diego San Diego Comic Con only? So it's really important to keep it an ex- keep it exclusive to the celebration. God bless America." To the for San Diego SD, for SDCC. Yeah, for SDC, they, they think it's important to keep it to SDCC attendees only. Really, I guess that's the reason why the the Hasbro SDCC exclusive went on sale this afternoon on Hasbro Toy Shop. Granted, it was only up for about thirty to thirty minutes to an hour, but still, it was sold outside of the convention, dude. I, uh, I seriously feel like as a collector whereas this is the first celebration that has not had a Hasbro exclusive except for Celebration 1 which nobody really even knew about I mean people knew about Celebration 1 there was quite a few people there but it wasn't a big deal now Celebration is a big deal it has a, hard, a huge fucking pool a lot of people skipped going to San Diego this year so that way they could go to, uh, go, to, go, to go to Celebration so you're telling all those fucking collectors that hey, um, sorry, you're not gonna, we're not gonna have anything for I, you. And and people pretty much have the choice this year of either going to Celebration or Dragon Con. Yeah, well, uh, that's that's how it was the last time. Also, like it was like two weeks after, it was two weeks from from SDCC to Dragon Con, and then from Dragon Con it was two weeks to Celebration. That's how it was the last time. So it's just like they need to do Celebration earlier in the year. Put it in June, something like that. Whatever. Just, uh, I mean, there's lots of kids that like Celebration. Uh, oh, not, there's lots of kids that like Star Wars. So for you to be able to take your kids to the, to the huge, badass Star Wars convention, don't do it in late August or whenever they're going back to school. Do it in June. You know, late June, middle of June, late May, whatever. But I, just, I, I can't believe that... I mean, it's it's just a fucking slap in the face. I'm hoping maybe they're going to pull, you know, pull a little thing whenever we get to celebration. Like, oh, we were playing. We have this exclusive here for you. But anyways, okay. So getting away from that. Are you calming down? Yeah, I'm getting You're a little breathing. bit. It's late, so I'm starting to calm down. So it's, uh, I'm starting to think thoughts of like, I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh. Uh, getting to the actual stuff that came out from Hasbro that I'm a, that I am happy about. Well, the one thing I'm not happy about is the fucking librarian is what I'm te- titling this. However, it is kind of cool, but it's the fucking librarian. It's Joe Castanew. Uh, her it's gonna be exclusive to Brian Toys. Brian's Toys. It's gonna be I think it's somewhere around twenty five dollars. Um, but you get. 
the fucking librarian, Joe Castanew, and you get a little uh, head bust of uh, like, Count Dooku. Uh, yeah, because he, he's one of the fallen fallen twelve or whatever. So they were the the bust were in the library. Well, you're doing one bust of the fallen twelve now. Guess what? All those collectors, they're going to be wanting. And, uh, yeah, thanks, all you dumb shits that wanted Ben Quadraneros that also wanted to cast a new. You're getting her. God, what a waste, dude. I can't believe that. I'm so glad she's not coming to fucking stores, man. I would have rather had another Boba Fett or a 500th Luke Skywalker instead of the fucking librarian. I can't believe that, dude. It just bothers me. But anyways, get, get away from that. Uh, cool things. Really awesome things. Uh, speeder bike. The Hasbro's redoing the speeder bike. Uh, it's going to be harkening back to the old one from Kenner where you could press a little spot and the speeder bike would fall apart. Uh, also comes with Biker Scout this time. A lot of times you usually buy a vehicle and it doesn't come with the pilot or whatever. So you, if you're like me, you're like, I have this vehicle. Well, I must have a pilot for this vehicle. So, therefore, you spend yourself, you know, run yourself ragged trying to find the figure that goes in that. Like, I still don't have a pilot for my Y-Wing, and it's driving me absolute ape shit crazy. But uh, the cool thing about the uh, Biker Scout is he is newly articulated. So, brand new figure, pretty much. He's got ball-jointed hips. He's going to be able to fit on the actual bike a lot better than before. I mean, if you ever had the bike beforehand or those vehicles before where you go to set them in the seat and they don't quite touch and you're like crap this one he actually sits fully on the seat the uh pegs where his feet rest actually have pegs on them so therefore if you go to turn it whatever he doesn't fall off and i haven't seen actual footage but from what i understand people you know they were doing it at the convention like actually shaking it with it upside down and he was staying on the bike so that's cool Oh crap! Um, really, really awesome stuff. Oh god, I'm gonna be spending so much money this year. Uh, two of them. They're both exclusives. They're both big motherfuckers. Uh, at at and vintage packaging, exclusive to Toys R Us. Uh, it's Return of the Jedi packaging, and it's also indoor paint scheme. I guess. Do I have an at at already? Yep. Do I want this ad at? Yep. Do I have room for this ad at? No, I don't. But I'm going to get it. I really want it. And the one I've been waiting for them to re release. And this one's going to be in vintage packaging also. And an exclusive. And they're both exclusive to Toys R Us. The Millennium Falcon. It's going to be in the vintage style Return of the Jedi packaging, just like the ad at. So look for around the ad at whenever it was uh, Empire Strikes Back packaging. Uh, ex you know the vintage style packaging exclusive to Toys R Us. It was at one hundred seventy dollars. It was one hundred seven. Oh, God damn it! It was one hundred seven dollars. Uh, the actual ad at retailed everywhere else for ninety nine dollars. I'm looking probably this Millennium Falcon is probably going to be around one hundred sixty. Seeing on how last time, first time it ever came out, it was one hundred fifty. So it's probably going to be around one hundred sixty, maybe even one hundred seventy dollars. So uh, those two. Another really cool thing, and I'm kind of disappointed there's not one around here. Uh, Kmart exclusive. There is going to be an ATST. Yeah, and that's going to be also indoor deco, uh, indoor paint job, uh, indoor paint job, but Return of the Jedi. It's all Return of the Jedi packaging. So I think they're getting ready to celebrate the Return of the Jedi <laughs> 30th anniversary, pretty much. Yeah. But uh, all this is. Uh, all this I'm assuming I couldn't find any release dates but all this pretty much has to be coming out before 2013 and you say well Dave you don't have any release dates but how do you know that's going to be coming out before 2013 and the reason why I know this is because 2013 vintage is ending so I'm really kind of disappointed about that I'm really not sure if I'm going to keep on collecting You're figures. You're getting pissed off left and right. I am, man. That's the reason why I stopped watching the panel because I was like, "Are you fucking serious, man?" It just it just killed me. But uh, I really don't know if I'm going to continue collecting. I'll I'll get vehicles, but I don't really know if I'll keep collecting figures 
that aren't on the vintage card. I might buy one here or there and maybe open them up or whatnot, or maybe even keep them on card. But right now, I'm just kind of going, well, I don't know. Uh, but with vintage going away, build a droids coming back. So there you go, I guess. If you like buying, you know, six figures to build one figure, uh, and then trying to find all the pieces for that figure, then have fun, man. That's not my bag, dude. I, I, I don't know. That's, it's, it's disappointing, but that's what you get. Uh, one more last piece of Star Wars news that isn't from San Diego Comic Con, but it sounds like there's going to be a reboot in the Star Wars comic line. I'm not sure if it's an official reboot, but Dark Horse, and I don't know, I don't have an official release date for this, but Dark Horse is doing Star Wars, the comic book. It's That's it, simple and plain. The title is Star Wars. So, and it's going to follow the characters i guess after a new hope and go from there so i'm actually kind of stoked about that so so is, are they gonna go retell uh like a new hope and and i don't know empire and jedi or i think it's gonna be between the movies i don't think they're actually gonna do uh a da- uh, you know a movie adaptations of the comics I okay I, I don't think they're doing movie adaptations like, of the comics i think they're doing I mean, like marvel did that Yes, they did, and those have been reprinted and reprinted and reprinted and put out in books and all like that. But uh, I think that these are going to take place between actual movies, so you'll have that space between uh, A New Hope and Empire, and then that'll probably be like I'm thinking. Now I don't know this for sure, but that's that's what I, this this is what I'm thinking is what's going to go on. I think the first run, you know, first season or whatever you want to call it, will be between A New Hope and Empire. And then you'll have the break. Then you'll go from Empire to Jedi. And then you'll have the break. And then you'll go from Jedi to wherever they feel like stopping if it runs that long. But that's that's my thought. So Do uh, Star Wars books run very long? Oh, uh, that's a so, good question. Because I, I was collecting Legacy for a while, and then my comics got ruined, so I just didn't pick up. Legacy, Legacy. is the one that ran the longest, and I can't remember exactly how many books they ran that one for. But whenever that one did end, everybody threw a fit because they loved it so much. Um, that's a good question. I, I will have to look that up, and I'll get back to that on a different podcast or put it on a Facebook or something. Okay. So is that it for Star Wars? That is it for no- Star Wars news. Or God damn, I almost said Star Wars news. That's <laughs> it for Star Wars news. Ah, it's time for neck tech tech neck news. Can I do? Can I do the old intro? Sure. Here's Adam with Tech News. All right. Um, tech news has been massively slow. Oh, dude. Um, I'm still finding more proof of a smaller iPad. Just to put that out there, because I know last time I talked about news, we talked about a mini iPad. More people are like, ah, mini iPad. So... Mini iPad, significantly lower price. But that's not my news, Uh-oh. because that was news two weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, what I'm doing is a little bit more interesting, at least to me it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, DARPA, Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, and that is a real group. That's not like a, yeah, that's no, not like I, a shield I've or a sword. I've actually heard of that before. Uh, they, re- they revealed a new technique for putting out fires. DARPA is the same. Co- uh, uh, if, if you'll remember back, the I think it's the article not that DARPA's, I covered. Just yeah, no, <laughs> no, DARPA. They're the same group that did the Luke hand. Uh, if you go back to our show that we did at Alcon, uh, my new story at Alcon was about the Luke hand. Ah, yes. Yes. Well, right now another branch is handling how to put out fires. And it's a uh, it's referred to as acoustic suppression of flame. Oh, that sounds pretty badass. And uh, what they've done is they have uh, two speakers playing a specific low frequency, and uh, it extinguishes the, the flame. <laughs> and uh, the acoustics, what it, what happens is uh, the acoustics increase the air velocity to make it uh, easier to alter the flame's origin of combustion, or uh, the flame boundary layer. Basically, you're using 
low notes to shove air and blow the fire out. And uh, of course, I've got a video of that to show everybody because it's cool. it's actually really cool. Um, that's the kind of technology that I like to hear about, like improving the world. Sometimes I like to just have like goofy shit, but sometimes when you got stuff that's like helping firefighters or doing something like that, I like to talk about. And those. I have a buddy of mine that's actually a firefighter for the National Forestry Service. So, so cool. So yeah. they may be using. We're uh, helping you out, Alex. <laughs> check that out, man. Right. Big fucking speakers that do low notes. Just don't stand in front of it, dude. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna shit yourself. <laughs> and then you're adding to the fire. Right. But uh, that's going to be it for tech news. And that's it for the podcast, man. Woo! Uh, guys, thanks for thanks for hanging with us here. And uh, just to let you guys know that August 4th, that's on a Saturday. Yes. That's We're going to be at Strip, the Web Comic Expo. That's the Dallas Web Comic Expo. Um, I apparently will be doing a panel. Awesome. So come and see me there. Uh, some great people are going to be out there. I know James O'Barr is going to be out there. I'm going to try to get my James O'Barr interview that I've been trying to get for the past year and a half. Awesome. Uh, and uh, like, Tap It a Darling, Neither Noir. It's and, loads um, of fun. It's man. and it's tons of fun, and it sound, and it's a little con. And this is what makes those. This is what makes little cons so cool. Is that everybody wants to be there. Yeah. Like, like some of those bigger cons, you get like the con. The con goer who's gone too many times. Yeah, they're just like, uh, ah, yeah. fuck, I don't want to be here. These guys want to be here. If you like web comics, if you're into cartooning, if you're into animation, if you're into any of that stuff, you got to go and check this out. This is a great con to go to. August 4th, uh, look it up. It's called Strip, the Dallas Web Comic Expo. You can Google it and you'll find more information there. Uh, for the show, if you want to get a hold of us, you can write us at the show at radcast.com. You can follow us on Twitter at the show, radcast, I'm sorry, at radcast show. You can follow me at Radcast Adam and you can uh, follow us on Facebook go to facebook.com slash radcast or you can just google radcast you can find us on Facebook as well please please like us on Facebook uh, become a radcast badass we would love you for it yes we would and we will thank you publicly and, and let everybody know how much it's we love you oh, it'll be so awesome it'll be cool thank you so publicly it'll be ridiculous yeah, it'll be like oh, it'll be like, oh, be like, oh thank you so hard yep <laughs> I gotta go wipe the screen down. right <laughs> uh, thank you whoever you guys are that went by and rated the podcast on iTunes do it some more, please, please, please. <laughs> yes, thanks. Thanks uh, for, yeah, go by and, and rate us on iTunes. Rate us on iTunes, write a uh, review. You can find us all over the map. iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Blip TV, YouTube, everywhere. You can find us everywhere. And uh, please check us out. Tell your friends about us. We would love you to share our show yes. with everyone. So. With that being said, good night. Goodbye. We love you. And keep the dream alive. Good night, internet.